from Microbe TV. This is Beyond the Noise, episode number five, recorded on June 13th, 2023. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. How's it going today, Paul? It's going well. Things are good. Phillies lost last night, but otherwise things are good. Well, Philadelphia lost a piece of a road, right? <laughs> there was that too. I-95 I disappeared. Right? Oh my gosh. Well, today we are going to talk about a column that you recently wrote entitled The Next Wave of Severe COVID, A Prediction. Apparently a meeting of experts at the White House raised an ominous possibility. What's going on here, Paul? Well, so I think we need to sort of put this pandemic in perspective. So this virus, SARS-CoV-2, sort of entered um, the human population in late 2019 in China and then swept across the world. Um, the first uh, variant was the so-called D614G variant, which swept across Asia, swept across Europe, swept across the United States, ultimately was replaced by the Alpha variant because it was more contagious than the Delta variant because it was more contagious. And, and that really defined the first two years of the pandemic. And in the first year of the pandemic, we had nothing. We were a blank slate. We'd never seen this virus before. We were 100% susceptible to it. We didn't have monoclonal antibodies. We didn't have antivirals. We didn't have vaccines, but we had all of that by the end of 2020. Um, by the end of 2021, you had hundreds of thousands of people who have died and now of almost 1.2 million people have died in this country of that virus. So the th one thing happened at the end of 2021 that scared people. And that was the entrance of the Omicron variant, the so-called BA1, the original Omicron, because this wasn't just more contagious. It was more immune evasive. But what it evaded was it really evaded antibody recognition. It didn't really evade T cell recognition. And T cells were important in protection against severe disease. So that's what you saw. You saw a, a dramatic increase in, in cases because people who'd been vaccinated or naturally infected could still have a mild case, but you didn't see a concomitant increase in hospitalizations and deaths. And that's where we are now. We're three years into this pandemic and you have these new strains, these new Omicron sublineages that are created, but they all still appear to be fairly highly conserved in terms of T cell recognition and T cells are important regarding protection against severe disease. So that's the issue. To me, it seems that the only way we're going to have to re-experience anything close to what we experienced in the first two years of this pandemic is if this virus evolves to, to, to the point that it is no longer recognized by T helper cells or cytotoxic T cells. And, and although you should never make predictions about this virus or this disease, I just don't see that happening. Why don't you see it happening? Are there any examples of viruses that have evaded T cell immunity and exploded? <laughs> well, I, first of all, there's less pressure on T cell uh, epitopes, I guess, to evolve as compared to the uh, epitopes that are uh, on the receptor binding domain that are associated with attaching the virus to cells. I mean, certainly the, the model one would use is something like influenza, where you get so-called antigenic shift and you have a dramatically new virus. And mm -hmm. once again, you have a fully susceptible human population, but coronaviruses don't appear to act that way. So yeah. uh, we'll see. The, the influenza virus, when it shifts, is because you, you get new genes from some other animal pool. And so that's where the new T cell epitopes come from. But for SARS-CoV-2, it's evolving in people. Well, mainly, I guess it could always come back from animals, but we don't see that happening yet. Um, right. We know that HIV and hepatitis C virus do escape T cell uh, immunity, but they do that in each host because, as you know, T cell immunity is only useful in you because of the way the the MHC molecules are polymorphic. So if you made a variant that escaped T cells in you, it wouldn't do anyone else any good. Exactly. And so we'll see. I mean, I, I, you've had people on TWIV like Daniela Weisskopf and Shane Crotty, and I think John Weary also has, has publishes fairly extensively on T-cell recognition sites. Yeah. It's gotten harder now because we have – it's hard to separate out people who've been vaccinated or naturally infected or both. But um, hopefully those studies will continue to be done and continue to, will continue to, to know whether – we will know whether or not this virus in anyone or anywhere – evolves to become uh, resistant to recognition by T-cells. But I, I don't imagine that'll happen 
But again, you should never make predictions about this virus. Do, do you know who, who who called this meeting? Did the White House call it? Did the scientists say we need to talk to you? Do you know what happened? <laughs> I, I don't know. I just know from that article I read by Dan Diamond in the Washington Post that there had been a meeting that roughly a dozen uh, people who had expertise in virology, immunology, epidemiology uh, met and and sounded a warning that, that this could happen, although it's, again, hard to predict. But that's going to be the key thing. Does this virus evolve away from T-cell recognition? You can take some, uh, I guess, uh, comfort in the fact that if you look at Wuhan 1 or you look at these XBB sort of sub-lineages with Omicron, there still appears to be 80 to 85 percent conservation of those T-cell recognition sites. I'm finding it very difficult to understand why these individuals would go and say, you know, it could change to evade T-cell immunity and that would be a problem, but it's not likely to ever happen. So what do you think is the point? Are they trying to get them ready are they trying to get, have them give money for something else? They're already doing the five billion for the um, the, the nasal vaccine that you mentioned before, <laughs> and the universal vaccine. Yes, exactly, exactly. right. I, I don't understand uh, their point. Do you? I, I don't know. I wasn't at the meeting. Um, it, it, but and and it's all, also hard to know because the um, the newspaper reports aren't necessarily a clear window to what happened at the meeting. But but what you got from that, certainly that newspaper report, was that at least some people had sounded an alarm. I hope there were T-cell people at that meeting. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you at the FDA Vaccine Advisory Committee meetings, we often don't have any sort of T-cell yeah. sort of uh, expertise. And the, the, the uh, document that is put out, the FDA briefing document for this coming Thursday's meeting of the FDA Vaccine Advisory Committee um, talks a lot about antibodies, but never mentions T cells. Yeah, I was at a meeting recently and there was a vaccine person from the CDC and I was talking about T cell epitopes and the need for a, a good T cell assay. And he said to me, I don't agree. We know the T cells are there. They're not changing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I guess he wasn't at the White House meeting, right? Right. That they're not changing is good. So the um, in that article, Dan Baruch is quoted as saying the T-cells are the unsung heroes, right? But I think you know on Twiv, we've been singing their praises for a couple of years now, right? Absolutely. That's true. And and I, I uh, but you don't really hear that in in sort of in the public health world. You don't no. hear that story in the public health world. And I think uh, we would do better, I think, for the American people if we could explain what it is that, that this vaccine can and can't do or where we really should sure. work sure. or not work. Well, I, I also think that I, I think this scares people. Of course, that's what the press would like to do is scare people to get them to read. This unnecessarily scares people into thinking that we're going to have a, a new big one any day now. And that's simply not the case, right? I agree. I think there's enough things to be scared about, like bridges collapsing, where you don't have to um, <laughs> yes. do them about other things. What I can tell you, Paul, is that there will be a new spillover at some point in the future and we'll have another pandemic. And then we'll have brand new T-cell epitopes that we've never seen before. Would you would you say that's a fair prediction? <laughs> We've had three pandemic potential viruses in the last uh, 20 years. So one in 2002, one in 2012. Now this one in 2019. Um, I think that's a fair bet. All right. The curiouser and curiouser, as Alice uh, said, the things that go on with COVID. You can uh, read this particular article at uh, Paul Offit's Substack. We will put a link in the show notes. That's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Vincent. 